Hi, I'm Ash. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to show you how to make... If you know me, you know I am the biggest Porter stan. If you check out my music... Yeah, definitely one of those. Forget about that. Today, I'm going to show you how to make Something Comforting by Porter Robinson. As far as the sounds go, they're pretty straightforward. How do we make those? Well, let's dive right in. So for the Super Saw, Serum opened up here and I use these wave tables. Basic CJW, which is found here, and MB Saw, which is found here. On oscillator one, put the octave up. MB Saw, keep that normal. Now the important part of the sound is this detune here. So turn unison up to eight and turn the detune around there. And then a little bit of noise oscillator there to add a bit of brightness. So I use OTT to squash it, bring out the highs and the harmonics. Without, with, side chain to make it pump, and then EQ to cut out the lows and make it a little bit brighter. I actually put a little boost over here too to give it a bit more body. This super saw is really nicely layered with the which I have here. Just a square base, that's all it is. And then a low pass filter on it. Then I put OTT on it once again to squash. Side chain to pump again. And then erosion just to add a bit more noise. EQ to boost the low end. But if you notice here as well, I'm cutting off the very, very lowest here, just so that once I put the kick in, it comes through really clearly. So a combination of low cutting here and this side chain will really make that kick come through. And that's basically it for the sounds. So let's get into what makes the sound like Porter Robinson chords. So the secret to it is using seventh chords. This here is A major seventh. A normal A major chord sounds like this. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This is A flat major. So a normal A flat major chord sounds like this. But what Porter Robinson does is he adds the seventh note of the scale onto the chord so that it sounds happy but sad at the same time. In that case, it's G here. Now an easy way to find the nearest is to take the root note, which in this case is A flat, and then down the half step. And then just add that. You can do it in the middle, you can do it on the top. But in this case, this inversion works best here. Next thing he does is he likes to stack everything. That means everything playing at the same time. So this super saw, this bass, this kick, all at the same time. And then what he does is what I call chord layering, where he takes each sound and then makes it a part of the chord. For example, the bass note will always be the root of the chord. For this part, it'll be the A flat there along with the full chord, and then he takes a vocal sample and plays the seventh. Probably wanting to get into this Before I do that though, I have to go over the vocal processing because this is a sample of the actual vocal. So at the beginning of this, I've gone ahead and actually re-recorded the chorus. 90% sure that Porter Robinson uses Vocaloid for that lead so he can get that really, really nice tone. But I'm pretty sure I came close to what it sounds like. When I originally recorded it, I recorded it down in this octave here. Just getting made you want more. Forgive how awful that sounds, but I did tune it. And then I transposed it up 12 semitones. On uh, Ableton, if you use the formants here, you can get rid of that chipmunk sound. Getting and that's essentially the base of the Porter Robinson vocal sound. The idea is you want to find a nice long sustained vocal. Something like that. So you take that, open up a sampler, and toss it in. So when you have it in a sampler, it's going to default if you look at root note over here to C3. So you want to play that note here. But then you look over at tuner, and it's going to tell you the actual note that's being played. So in this case, it's G. So we want to set root note to G. Now why are we doing this? So that when you actually write out the notes in MIDI, it's the correct notes. So if you play a G, it's a G note. So right now, this is what it'll sound like. So once you have the notes put in, 
That's the vibe it's going for. But he's got that like weird slide going on. And let me show you how to put that in. So that's here in the sampler under pitch oscillator. You want to set glide to portamento. That's what that's called when a note kind of slides into another one. Around 40 milliseconds was kind of, was like the magic number for me. Because if you do it too much, it gets like, it doesn't even slide anymore. Then I processed it with reverb and then I want to bring the reverb out even more. So OTT goes on it. The OTT also adds to the brightness and that's essentially the vocal lead. So I have two channels here as well because the first sample that I chose didn't really fit with this higher register. So, so I went through the exact same process. I went back to the, to the chorus. I found a different sample. I forget which one. I think it was that one. I picked that one, put it in the sampler, pitched it up again, and this one sounded a little bit better because the first sample actually sounded like this. It was, was not even close at all. Like it was too short. So I had to find a longer sample and that's where this one came in. And that one turned out like way better. The exact same processing, just reverb and OTT. That's it. And that's how simple it is. Once again, I've also made the project file available for download. So if you really want to dive in, see all the drum patterns, see exactly how he does it, I've included that as well. Feel free to like and subscribe to the channel if you like the content, if you want to see more. Check out my music. I'm going to plug my music today because it's close to Porter Robinson. I write sad boy shit, so check it out. Catch me on Twitch. I'll be streaming there soon as well. And hit me up on Instagram. I'll answer any questions there, but I'll see you guys on the next one.